Hello and welcome to, and now for something completely machinima, the podcast about, you guessed it, machinima and related technologies, uh, virtual filmmaking, whatever name you may call it. Um, before we dig into uh, the film that we're going to talk about this episode, I wanted to remind you that we do have a blog, uh, completelymachinima.com slash blog, and lots of news and developments there um, that are discussed. Uh, Tracy works very hard on that. She's our in-house scribe. Uh, and Thank you. Uh, we used to do that as part of the podcast episode, uh, but we made a, a format change midway through this year and shifted that content over to the blog. And uh, the podcast now just focuses mainly on films, but we wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that that's out there. So be sure to check that out. It's completelymachinima.com slash blog. That's also where very, you can give us feedback on the on right. the podcast as well. It's very robust too. Uh, Tracy has been spending a lot of time putting news in there and a lot of very interesting news. So definitely check that out. Absolutely. I mean, just so that you're aware, this 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 month what we've got is a bunch of stuff on AI generators for filmmaking, um, which we'll cover in one of the tech updates, including a couple of really interesting projects. One's a music video and the other is a film which is being released in episodes on Twitter. Um, absolutely fascinating. Uh, and then in the second tech update, we'll cover some of the platform updates. There seems to be uh, every single platform that we can think of has released something in the last month. Uh, and alongside that, we've got some great links for different types of libraries. Um, we think you might be interested in all super, Excellent. All super useful. The AI stuff is so fascinating. I, and my because I've, I've been really busy lately, my only exposure to it is in my Facebook news feed. I follow a guy that many of you out there listening will know uh, by the name of Warlord. And he's been posting some of the experiments he's doing with this stuff. And it's just mind blowing. Wow. Yeah, it's really mind blowing. I know, Ricky, you've seen it because you've commented on some of this stuff. It's just amazing. Um, and uh, I've got another friend who's a professional photographer, and he's, he's our age, Ricky, and, and he's posting occasionally. He's gotten into it from a photographer's perspective. Yeah. He'll post yeah, yeah, yeah. AI renderings. Uh, he'll label them as such. I mean, some of them are just, it's, it's unbelievable. So anyway, yeah. I'm, Tracy, I'm looking forward to see, seeing uh, the result of your deep dive there. Uh, absolutely. There is actually just one thing I'd like to, um, to say, really. I want to give a shout out to Leo Lucian Bay um, and his latest project, which is called Tag Tunes, um, which is selling e-cards using Machinima. And it's perfect yeah. if you're looking for alternative Christmas cards to send folks this year. Wow, cool. So it's tagtoons.com, I think. Um, and it's uh, also on Facebook. So definitely look out for that one. Cool. That's awesome. He invited yeah. me to try it out right right before the hurricane hit, so I haven't got uh, to do it. Oh, but I'm looking forward to checking that definitely out. Definitely yeah. do it. Definitely do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> he told All me right, about so... it a while ago. He told me about it a while ago too, but I sworn to secrecy, so I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, it's out there now, so we can yeah, all do good. it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, in in uh, my best, what's the term? Nepotism. Uh, I'm picking <laughs> my pick. For the film today is one that I had an active hand in, uh, which is a reminder that sometimes when a film is one of our picks, it's because we really want to talk about it. Um, in this case, I was a few feet underwater figuratively with the hurricane. I'll, that's the last time I'll mention it, I promise. And so someone kindly slotted this film in uh, for us to talk about today, which is great because if those of you who know me, you know that I, it's very hard to get me to shut up about <laughs> stuff that I've worked on. So right. uh, the film is called 917 or 917. Actually, we've never spoken it out loud. So, uh, but it's, yeah, the number is 917. And the official description uh, is a young man traumatized by war and death struggles to keep his grip on reality. It's directed by Evan Ryan, whom I'm sure you recall has been mentioned on the show by me many times because he's a good friend of mine and a very talented artist. Um, and I handled the audio on this. Um, so before we get, I, I want to hear you guys' uh, feedback on it. I'll give you a little bit of background on uh, how and why this film came about. 
um, I want to say a couple years ago on an email account that I monitor, but isn't one in my name. So it was just very random. I started receiving this series of emails. Um, I don't think that they were intentionally addressed to me physically. They were just to this account. And the only thing I can compare it to is if you've seen the movie Seven, um, the, the old classic kind of thriller with Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt, and the, uh, Kevin Spacey as one of the best bad guys of all time. When they find the bad guy's stash, he's got all these notebooks, hundreds of notebooks that are just filled in with all these diatribes on this kind of quasi-religious nature and, and all that stuff. The ramblings of someone who's essentially mad. Uh, that's what these emails were. And I'm talking tens of thousands of words per message. And then always a link to this really obscure website. It wasn't GeoCities, but it was something like that, like some just ancient hosting platform. And it was just text in, in these paragraphs, hundreds of thousands of words. I actually never did scroll all the way to the bottom. I couldn't make it. Oh my goodness. Um, it, so basically it was just this maddening uh, uh, text of conspiracy theory wrapped in weird kind of pseudo religious references. And to me, it just, it seemed like, uh, it, clearly it was from someone who's, who's disturbed, um, probably schizophrenia or something in that spectrum. And also had no idea who it was. It's all anonymous. So I shared it with uh, my friend, Evan Ryan, and said, in reading this, I had this idea, because uh, I've, I've long been fascinated by uh, a mind consumed with madness, uh, with this schizophrenia, this disorganized thinking, disorganized speech, uh, because it's so disturbing. Um, and no one really understands it. Like, you know, people have been trying to over the last century, and it, it's just... I think they understand it physiologically now, but in terms of trying to make sense of that disorganized speech, it's very, very difficult next to impossible because the yeah. thoughts are so scrambled. And this yeah. seemed like a really unique insight um, that you might only get as some kind of a clinician or a psychiatrist or, or something along those lines. So I shared it with Evan and just says, I want to see if we can make a short film that tries to capture the essence of this mindset. It's not to preach it. It's not to comment on it as right or wrong. It's certainly not to poke fun or exploit. And I felt safe it not being exploitive because the author was anonymous. Um, but I said, I'd like to, uh, to do that. Here's what I would propose. It's, it's a formula that I used one other time with, uh, with Tom Jantle, actually. But it was at Tom's request. He says, I want a song. And he gave me like a bunch of adjectives about what, what it was. Make me a soundtrack. And then I'm going to make a movie based on the soundtrack. And so we did that. And I can't remember what he ended up titling that movie. But it was one of Tom Jantle's films um boy i wish i could remember the title because <laughs> the title changed several times he had no idea what the film was going to be until he received the audio so i was really intrigued by that process and i thought well i'm going to propose it this time the same thing i'm going to make audio i'm going to narrate some of the text keeping as true to the original wording as possible and then i'm just going to throw that to you and then you do what you want to visually with it. And I'm not going to meddle. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you what I was envisioning. Um, you'll have the same source text and my audio and go to it. And so he did. And he worked on it for, I want to say it was close to a year. And every once in a while, I would share a little screenshot here or there or whatever. Um, but uh, we worked independently like that. So, and this is the result. I mean, I think maybe in the in the final stretch, when it was time to do the final edit, he may have asked me to review it. And I gave a couple little minor suggestions 
for the final cut, but but 90% of it is, 99% of the visual is just Evan and the audio is me. So um, that's how the film was made. Um, since it's been released, it's it's been, I wanna say half a dozen film festival selections. Evan took care of submitting it where he felt appropriate, um, including one horror film festival in ah. somewhere in South America. I can't remember which country. I Maybe can see Chile. that, yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, so that's that's how the film came to be. Um, what engine did what, he shoot uh, it in? This was done in Unity 3D. I've been wondering that as well. Once you get us thinking, yeah, it doesn't look quite like iClone, and it and it's not Unreal. So what was it? And of course, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, he did it in Unity, and I know very little about how he did. It. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't know Unity very uh, hardly at right, all. Right. I've mm -hmm. never actually used it, and um, I know that there was a little bit of motion capture for some of the movements, um, but not not entirely. Some of it's hand animated. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll have to to talk to Evan uh, if you want some more details about the the I'd craft to, there. I'd love yeah. Let's but, see if we uh, can do an interview with him. I think he'd be a very interesting person to talk to about working in Unity with uh, Unreal becoming dominant. It's interesting to see somebody working in Unity, which is very accomplished platform and free as well. Right. So it's worth talking to him about it. How do you feel it turned out, Phil? Uh, I think it's disturbing. Um, I've shared it with a, a few friends who don't have anything to do with our craft. And that's the word that's in every single review is disturbing um some that's all they said <laughs> didn't really give any production feedback at all it just says oh, that's really disturbing one guy who uh, is a has studied psychology and worked in mental hospitals and said yep that's that's what schizophrenia sounds like that's that's oh, what that's, it sounds like that's yeah. a great compliment that's yeah. authentic so yeah i i, I mean hey i didn't I didn't write this film. I just selected the lines from whoever the writer was. But uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. And and I don't know. I was as surprised as anyone with with what Evan did with it visually because there's there's a narrative in there somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. And you get pieces of it, um, which I had no idea that that was going to be in it. I I, mm. I honestly I I didn't have a narrative in mind at all. I couldn't. I couldn't get it, um, which is part of why I, I I chose Evan because he does he 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 lifts things out of things he 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 sees things uh, that I don't, um, and yet the narrative isn't like linear or really in your face or forcing a particular interpretation of it, but there's enough there that you can kind of piece together some semblance of story or at least of, of character um, that he projected on the, on the narration. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's nothing I could have ever done on my own. That's for sure. Cause mm -hmm. I, and I've, I've had many discussions with him and with Tom and with others about, and with you, Ricky, about that, that abstract, anytime you veer into the abstract, it's just an area that I'm either, I'm either weak in it or I'm, very low confidence in it so i don't go there um so it was it was a pleasure Wait, to this is probably you actually the, you actually do go into the abstract well point. with video with just visuals, you, i have trouble yeah you don't do it visually yeah because this yeah. whole process that you've done is abstract and unusual yeah. uh, creativity so you are involved in it it's just that yeah it's i do have that i have that a visual style. with audio no. right yeah right. what did you guys think of it I'm glad you explained the backstory because um, when I watched it, I thought this is very disturbing. <laughs> Just like your friends. <laughs> um, so now I know the origin of this story, and I, it, I'm not going to say it makes what that like, makes more sense. I understand where it came from better. Um, yeah, disturbing is a good way for it. This is a, what I'm interested in is the way that you and Evan worked on it. Is you had that email, you figured out um, the audio, and then sent it to him. Um, that's a very fascinating sort of workflow. 
which I hadn't really thought it about sure that is. before. So yeah, that's interesting. very impressed with that. Uh, as for the film itself, it's very well made, and I can see the the schizophrenic aspect of it. And uh, I don't personally know anyone that suffers from that, but that this film is what I would imagine it would be like um, from my limited understanding of schizophrenia and those kind of mental health issues. So, uh, yeah, that, that kind of captured it really well. And it, I got to say again, it was very disturbing. <laughs> Shall I have a go? Because you know what? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, do you know what? It's really interesting to hear you say schizophrenia because I didn't pick schizophrenia as the way that I would describe it, actually. Um, but what I would say, I'll, I'll tell you for why in a minute. Um, I, you know, this is such a powerful um, film. It's, it's, it's really shocking, actually visually shocking and to me what this guy had was ptsd uh, and in, in my interpretation of it, because like like um damon just said i don't know anybody with schizophrenia i have come across people with ptsd and and maybe that does similar things in the in the in the in the brain i don't know um but just for a moment i felt that um what what we were seeing was was potentially what that might really feel like um and these images mix things together that you might relate um, uh, as childhood memories, such as that teddy bear and the landscapes, the flowers and such, with death and shock and dis destruction, but also things like science fiction and conspiracy theories and religious texts. It's like this the, the world for this guy no longer makes any sense as a safe place um, for human life. And that central character to me had clearly been a soldier that the helicopter excerpt showed that really well you only really got a sense of that at the, at the beginning part of that through the soundscape um that kind of thudding noise as these um, huge blades chop the air um which was just about audible um but then later you know as i was kind of listening to it my, my sort of thoughts were confirmed with some of the images that you then um, began to see and then sat on that chair in a kind of almost drunken stupor. Uh, this guy's in an hallucinogenic zone. Maybe he's taken drugs as well as alcohol. You can see the bottle, but maybe he's also on medication. But point is, you know his conscious, his state of consciousness by that kind of otherworldly look um, on his face and, and, and his position in the chair. And he's losing it big time. All these memories of the things that he's seen whilst it, to me, it felt like he would, he'd he been, um, say, I don't know, posted in various parts of the world. I'm guessing maybe Afghanistan primarily, but maybe also Iraq. And these things are catching up with him. It's never kind of revealed what role um, he, uh, he played specifically, but, you know, clearly soldiers are there to do a job. And we all know that. Uh, and evidently, he's not coping uh, well with what he's... Uh, been involved with as part of that that to me seemed to be the narrative that was running through it and, th and then the opening scenes are nothing other than truly disturbing as, yes, as we've all said and it gets worse from from those opening scenes that that soundscape is a cacophony of white noise and voices moving in what seems to be a kind of spatial swirling environment around you and I'm really curious the 917 frequency what's the hit theory behind that because I I tried to look it up and I couldn't really find anything about it. I'm guessing there's more to it um, than maybe my consumer and researcher grade al algorithmic profile gives me access to. Or maybe this story has just caught me out in a way that I wouldn't expect it to. Um, so anyway, uh, the lip sync and such doesn't really compare to some of the other work we've seen in Unreal and iClone projects recently. But um, for this, I really don't think that matters at all. The, the, the facial um, crudity, if, that, if I can describe it as that, is actually a really interesting aesthetic choice here. It's definitely not realistic, in much the same vein that the characters um, uh, stylized by, uh, in Martin Bell's Prasenberg Ridge um, that we reviewed a, a while back, they also mm. weren't mm. realistic. Um, and it's not about photorealism of the characters. Uh, the environment or even the movement of these, it's um, the situation that counts and the moment. 
And it's fascinating to have seen that captured in the five minutes duration of this film. I think the length felt um, about right. And actually the credits and the way they were done was also a really interesting choice here. Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah. That, was that very subliminal good. kind of crad flash at the end. Really, really interesting. Enjoy it? No, I can't say that I actually did. But then again, <laughs> that wasn't the point of this, was it? Um, it's a really masterful short. Um, and my congratulations to Evan and you, Phil, for, for delivering something far more disturbing than I think any horror movie could ever be for me. That's my thoughts on it. Nicely put, nicely put. I have a lot of things I want to say about this film, so I want to try to do them in an orderly fashion. I enjoy this film very much, um, although <laughs> enjoyed is a relative term cool, cool, cool. Right. in describing. Uh, I was not disturbed by it, but I was affected, strongly affected by it. And uh, although I'm critical, I really, really applaud the risk taking involved in it. And now that I understand the back um, background process of putting it together, it makes even more sense to me. The, my problem initially was a, a personal one, which is it was the last film I saw in the sequence of all the films that we're looking at this month, and it suffered in comparison. And it was only because of that, because I had seen all of these beautifully rendered films, and suddenly we get into this. Uh, it's like looking at uh, Rembrandt paintings and then walking over and looking at uh, Clay or uh, Goya or something like that. They, they the subject matter and the style are so jarring you immediately go no no i don't like that but once i realized that was my reaction i stopped that and i started paying attention to the style and there's some really really interesting um, things being done directorially in in this one is is that the style of the film as tracy points out matches the kind of interiority of the person the madness of the person having experienced mental health problems myself um, i know what that feeling is that sense of racing thoughts and hopelessness and stress and i can't get out of this i can't get out of this and he captured that both of you captured that very well um i think the style of it was just perfect uh, to, to reflect the content um, it the the strange shapes, the movements of things, the the isolation of the character. They kept the director kept putting him in an isolated situation, so you could see that, in a way, it almost explained his madness and that he was so isolated from everybody. And in trying to to cope with that isolation, he starts making all of these mental collection connections to things without actually rationally questioning whether those connections are actually true or not he just assumes they are and, and from my own past i know that's the case you just reach out to grab something that will give you some connection so you can stay whole and you won't fly off into the bits and pieces of things and i thought it captured that experience very very well now and i think the highlight of the, of the thing was the um remarkable soundscape and music design i think that was the highlight of the film your work in that was you're just so good at that phil thank you just have such a great talent and being able to put sound and music together in a way that is just so compelling it's on a whole other level now it wasn't it didn't stand out so much that it it called attention to the the aesthetics or the or the visual style because they blended well together, but it was so, so good. Now, there were some problems with it. Um, one is pacing was a problem. I had no idea what was going on until the narration started. And I think that had the narration started earlier, it would have immediately connected me to what was going on. So it was too long of a period of time before we got to that connection. Also, I think although the narration was a good choice there's a problem in acting when you do something that's monotone or the same thing over and over again and the choice was to do this as a, a, a the same rhythm the same monotone over and over again the problem is is after a certain period of time you begin to tune out what the person is saying 
because it's the same repeated pattern. So the trick is, is defining variety in something that doesn't appear to have variety. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think had, had you worked with, um, um, with the director a little bit more to find a way to build that, that monologue so that it became more intense and it had an actual climax because the problem was, is that you were doing the same thing at the end of the film that you were doing at the beginning of the film. And the challenge is to find a way to put dynamics into that. Because inevitably what you want to do is you want to make, I, I imagine this is what you and, and the director wanted. You want to make this character empathetic. You want to understand, not like the person or this is a good person or make value judgments, but you want to understand, you want to be, you want to feel that sensibility. When people say disturbing, that's an easy way to describe something that is much more in depth and much more complicated than that process is, which is empathy, you right. know? And I think giving the narration more than just a monotone all the way through, it would have helped a lot. So I think you guys should have worked a little bit more on that. Um, and it was just a matter of, of corrections, you know, just finding ways to create dynamics all the way through mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, I'm, I'm critical of the film, but I, I really, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I loved, love the style of it. I love the sound of it. I loved its effect on me because it made me remember and think about times in which I struggled. And you just don't often find these kinds of films or subjects of these kinds of films in machinima. Mm -hmm. So it was a risk and an originality to it that made me very, um, very impressed with the result. I, I liked it very much and I applaud both of you for putting it together and Thank uh, you. Uh, sharing your experience of uh, creating this intriguing and hard to watch film. <laughs> Such great feedback. Thank you, Ricky. Thank sure. you. Sure. Uh, that's everybody, isn't it? I'll answer the 917 thing to close things up. So the 917 terahertz that was mentioned multiple times. There were other frequencies mentioned in his, I hesitate to call it a manifesto because there was no real structure to it, but um, that was prominently mentioned as supposedly a frequency that's used for uh, for the government to be able to read minds and and ultimately influence and control minds as well. I, I wasn't able to, I tried to research it as well, Tracy, and I was not able to find even mm -hmm. anyone else talking about it, which I did that before I even shared the uh, text with Evan. And it was actually uh. discovering that solitary nature of some of these just crazed thoughts. That to me increased the intrigue uh, of this is something special uh, and unique um, and if I had a way to, well, I don't know if I had a way to reach out and contact the person, I don't know if I would, no, I would because, I, because, I would because all. simply <laughs> because the only impetus to do so would be if I thought that I could help them. I, I'm not a qualified to help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone in anywhere near no. that state, you know, I can no, be, you don't want to mess with that kind of, person. I can be fascinated by it, but I have, uh, you know, the, 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 the most mental health experience I have is chronic depression. That's hmm. not this. This is something no. else. This is another banana. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's what it was, Tracy. It was just mentioned in the text uh, yeah. multiple times to where it's like, okay, this is not an accident, not an accidental number in his mind. Yeah. His or her mind. It, I it's, it's an appropriate him. film for our times too, because we're in a, mm -hmm. a paranoid time in which there's extremes of, of course, of, yes, of, of 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 opinions about things, and 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 this whole notion that somehow secrets are buried beneath, and and those who are in power are, are hiding all of these secrets, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating to see that rendered, and I I one of the things I love. Mm -hmm. Uh, I personally love to do is do found objects or ephemera 
uh, and then create art from them. And I thought the idea of taking this, this text from this unknown person and, and turning it into an art was, is a fascinating uh, preoccupation and a, a, a project because there's so much of it out there. I collect photographs, ephemeral photographs, and I put them up and right. every single one of them tells me stories. And I think, oh my God, how did that happen? What did they do this? And I wanted to, I want to make a story out of it. You know what I mean? Right, right. So That's I, very much the experience of, of encountering this text is, is yeah. yeah, like a found it's a, something. It's a, yeah. it's a rich experience. And I encourage any machinima filmmakers to look for that. If you're struggling to find a source material, don't just sit down and go, okay, I want to do a story about, you know, that parallels a television program or a, or a commercial or a movie. Look for found objects. Look for found text. There was a magazine that came out for maybe 12 issues called Found. And all it did was publish stuff that people found everywhere, including photographs, <laughs> um, uh, pictures, letters, postcards. And on their website, they even had audio recordings that they had discovered and that they shared. No context wow. for anything, just what it is. And I think those are great sources a creative sources to launch into a project. And, and this is a perfect example of how it can turn into some, a really fine personal expression of the paranoid personality. Right. And the, like you're right, Ricky, the, the paranoid personality I'm, situated in this particular time, in this time I'm, of yes. free exchange globally of not just information, but misinformation and yeah, crazy ideas. Absolutely. Yes. You know, that can just can can just you can go on the internet and find communities of people around thousands of completely people. irrational ideas. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. it's Ricky you know, madness is not watch. new to our time, but <laughs> but the 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 speed at which one could assimilate evidence to support your particular madness is Astounding. truly unbelievable and it's one of the more frightening things about the internet i think yeah I as, think so as, too. and believe me I'll, I'll all day i'll laud the great things about it but that's one of the things that's you know uh that that's right in the to me that's in the same category as like dark web and things like that yeah. the kinds of yeah. things that go on unseen um it's it's fascinating and and wonderful and terrible yes so. it's as if the style of the film reflects the inner reality of the character. You're actually yeah. seeing the inner feelings of the character in the external world that he's surrounded by. And that's just a great stroke. That's a perfect yeah. way to do it because you could see it being done in the Unreal Engine style with none of that. And I don't think it would have been nearly as effective. I agree. Yeah, completely agree with that. It, I mean, it, it's a truly just disturbing film i can't tell you Ding. how disturbing that was <laughs> Ding, yes uh, yeah 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 this and, one was interesting because I, I i know that an important part of a film's process is to to promote it how do you promote it well even on facebook you know uh, it's like do i really want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because i won't get the yeah. chance to tell the story i just told of the origin no, of this. i'm just won't. gonna put it out there and if you don't know that story it's like well that's phil talking is this what's really going on inside that demented head of his it's like i think a way to promote it is to <laughs> promote that 917 aspect of it mm. Because yeah. you may catch people who are inter interested in that sort of thing <laughs> oh my god that, that would be just my luck people. yes yes <laughs> The whole community of paranoids <laughs> all going, this is a great film. We can start but, but for all the wrong reasons. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Great well, choice. Thank you guys very much. An uh, excellent job. Uh, I yes. really appreciate it. Yeah. So that's it for this film uh, and this episode. And uh, next week we'll be talking about the next film in the queue. So yep. thank you for joining us. I didn't even introduce us at the beginning of the show. What kind oh, of a they all know us by now. Uh, by the way, the show notes, show notes at completelymachinima.com will be uh, listed. We'll have uh, links to all of the things we were talking about, the subjects and everything. Just check out. And our names. And our names. <laughs> oh, so, that's great. 
So, but you know, given that that film was anonymous, maybe that that is the best approach on this one. So, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. All right, see y'all. Right. Bye.